Today I'm going to show you how to paint gold trim over airbrush metal and bring it all together with a wash slash glaze. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. A bear, and on today's hobby hump day tutorial, of course, I am going to show you how to paint gold trim over airbrush metal now these are two tutorials that we have already done we've done the sharpie tutorial how to paint gold trim with sharpies and then we've also done the how to airbrush metals tutorial on necron destroyers so we're going to kind of bring both of those things together and with a little wash glaze where it's a it's a hyphenated thing it's a total total technical term and and pull those things together and get this ready for a little green glow loving on the power sources which is another tutorial that we've already done so this is kind of the, like the middle step, but it's one of those things that you could do, um, you know, painting, painting trim, but also going back and kind of fading it in to what you're working on, which in this case is a um, airbrushed metal. So it's it's a it's a neat little tutorial on how to augment your infantry models. It, it might not work so big on, you know, bigger models like tanks or like knights, like big flat panels. This doesn't work good on. But for little infantry models, you know, like shoulder pads, like chaos trim on all their stupid vehicles, you know, all that stuff is gonna work. It, this technique is gonna work great on that. It's what I use on my iron wares. It's what I'm using on these neck rounds that I'm doing for commission and it's what you can use to add to your hobby tutorial to you know get some stuff done and uh, you know faster than we would normally do it if we were painting with the airbrush and painting with a brush using the trim so uh, let's get right to it So we're going to be working on models here and a lot of people messaged me after I did the, the whole Sharpie tutorial and then also the metal tutorial, how to get that gold. Well, we didn't, we didn't really put out the Sharpie tutorial and then when the Sharpie tutorial came out, they're like, oh, well that would be cool to have like both together and I'm like, I can do that because <laughs> I knew I had these Lich Guard coming up that was going to basically be doing both. Now I haven't got to the, to the green glow effect here yet. So we're going to be spraying that in right here and in the eyes. But in the meantime, basically what we're going to do is I have taken uh, one of these guys. This is our, our demo figure here for the whole Lich Guard project. And we've airbrushed them up with all the fades and everything in here. And now what we have to do is we're going to have to wash it. But together, we're going to combine a bunch of steps. So we're going to basically do a wash with uh, the new G-Dub known oil here. And what that's gonna do is it's so light, it's almost like a fake glaze, but you could use it straight out of the bottle just as a wash, which we're not gonna do today, but you could do, um, you know, before you start highlighting and stuff in here. I just don't wanna lose any highlights at this point because we've gone, we brought it up. But if you're at the base coat, you could do this straight up out of the bottle, let it dry, and then do your fades like we did in the, the uh, airbrushing metal tutorial. But for here, we're gonna water it down a little bit. So we're kinda of gonna make it halfway between a glaze, halfway between a wash. We're gonna mix in those paints and basically show you how to do the two step metal process you know basically um on the fly you know on a time restraint right here so let's jump right into it so first off this guy is going to need some gold so we're going to get in here we're going <laughs> we're going to do our sharpie tech grab our bronze marker now you've seen this before so i'm not going to super bore you with it but for those of you that haven't watched the video basically we're just literally this easy i'm just going to get in here <laughs> Here with a Sharpie marker. Oh my god, it's so easy. It's so crazy. I feel like a lot of times that my um, my painting style almost emulates, you know, a lot of people. A lot of people don't have time, you know, with families and things like that, or studying, or school, or military, or work, or whatever, you know, to do a whole lot of work on their models. And of course, myself, you know, running spiky bits and everything, and doing all the stuff that we do here. A lot of times, we don't have a whole lot of time either. So I feel like my paint schemes. Um, are pretty much 
born of you know needing more time so to speak so there's basically what we're going to do we're going to hit up that we're going to hit the shoulder pads and we're going to hit up that neck round symbol and come back and show you basically how to do the second step So there it is, all filled in right around the lip, the shoulder pad, and the symbol right there. Now you see I got a little bit on the metal there, but that's okay because that's going to actually give us something else to show you in this tutorial. So next up is g -g 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 gold, and gold will go pretty easy, so we'll pretty much show you a bunch of this. So for gold, we're just going to hit the edges. And remember, when you're, when you're doing this sometimes, you want to just get right in here and get along this hard edge right down the line right here. And I'm going a little wide with it because I know I'm going to come in with my silver next. And I'm just going to like basically just hit the edges. So I don't want to like waste it, but I want to go kind of wide with it there. So I gave it a little bit of a wide berth. And we're going to do some crossovers uh, right here as well. So just right over top, cross that U right there. Super easy. Now up here, um, I'm just going to kind of mash it. Just kind of mash it down in the middle there because we're going to be super careful with our silver. Um, to highlight the uh, all that that neck or near uh, symbol right there. Now here, um, we're going to go a little wide. We're not going to wet blend it together. So we're just basically going to kind of go wide with this and along the uh, shoulder pad itself right there. And then we're going to flip it back. And remember, always move your model, right? Not your brush. You always want to be going the same way with your brush. So you maintain the most control, which is, you know, basically uh, away from you for this particular instance. So here we're going to get into the, the raised edges here and bring it back down around the slip. Nice and wide. Very carefully. It's This is super easy. Like basically, I showed you a whole tutorial on how to do this on the Night Titan, do a little washing. But I mean, it's really going to come through here with these two different types of models together. You know what I mean? So, and then we're just going to get this spot right here. So there is the gold, all the gold we need to worry about. Now I'm gonna actually set this to dry for a second because even though it is Sharpies, I'm sure we've all uh, seen it where we've actually smeared a Sharpie before it actually set, so we don't want that, so we'll be right back. So I think it's as dry as it's gonna get now. So now we're gonna get to the secret weapon. This is the silver Sharpie. Now these are all the metallic, um, not the paint, not the paint Sharpies. You want the metallic one here. So we're gonna get in here. And we're just gonna hit all the raised edges very ever so slightly going right down the line, just like this, just to give it that sweet, sweet highlight. Boom, right down that line right there. And it really blends into that metallic shine right there. We're going to do the same thing on this side, just go and remember, always move your model. It's very imperative, especially when you're doing stuff like this detail oriented, right? So now I'm going to pull across that ridge that I just did with the gold, but very lightly and twisting the light there just to make sure. And there it is. And then right up here on top, a little pokey ball, got to catch them all. And that looks beautiful. Oh yeah. And then up here, like I said, I'm just gonna go very light in the paint. Just right, and just kind of dragging it ever so lightly, almost like a dry brush with this thing right across the top there to get that Necron symbol. And now here, we're just gonna go right on the lips of this uh, 1980s shoulder pad here. I'm sure y'all remember some of that, some of that women's fashion. And right across there oh man that's really starting to pull together right and back across this is this is like literally the easiest thing you do you want to shave hours off your paint time when you're doing gold go to amazon right now pick up this three pack of markers it's literally life-changing when it comes to hobby and then right across the back right here loving it beautiful but wait there's more right so remember this is metal and this is a silver so i'm gonna hyper highlight this freaking blade right up here too look at that i don't even have to get another paintbrush out to do that i'm just gonna hit it do the same thing go right across that ridge boom look at that fade some ill fades right there come back up here on this blade come across oh so sexy look at that and get it back here on this one as well boom 
Oh yeah, no, this one's a little trickier. We gotta be careful. All right, so there it is. So that's super easy. So you got all that, and this guy. Oh, we want to hit this ridge right up here on his head, because that's easy. I love that low hanging fruit right there, so to speak. So we're just gonna cut it across right there as well. Look at that, super shiny. I mean, you can even get crazy. Like you wanna, you wanna do a bunch of highlights. You can get in here on these panels. You know. Whatever you want to do, it's really sky's the limit. Whatever you got time for, hit these knee pads, you know, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. But I just want to keep a super, super tight and super highlight on the, on the edges. I don't want to get too carried away with it. But I feel like that's a, that was really good pickup right there. So we're going to go on the back right here and hit these edges because we're the same on the front. We might as well be in the same on the back right and this is remember this is before a wash and this is before we get in there with that green glow so we want to make sure we cover all of our bases before we start adding all those highlights that are going to give it that pop from you know three feet away and sometimes it's a little bit difficult but I just gotta stay with it there it is okay so there's that so now we're gonna get ready for a little wash slash glaze with that new uh, gloss and all the oil I was telling you about so oh, while that's driving drying I'm actually gonna talk to you so we're gonna take some of this and we're gonna grab uh, my favorite water bottle paint palettes here so I already poured some of it out and then I got some right here too. And this I actually mixed up already with part of my Future Flow Wax water, 25 part Future Flow Wax. Well, one part to three parts water right there. So we're gonna actually dilute it down a little bit so that when it pulls, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see almost like it's kind of between a wash and a glaze almost because I don't wanna get in there and ruin all that fade, right? So there's that, and you can kind of see it starting. It's a little translucent, but it's not quite. So it's kind of an in-between right now, I want to say. And that gloss, the gloss that the, the stuff's made out of is really amazing. Like, it does so much work for it already. <clears throat> so this guy should be dry by now. And we're going to get in there, and we're going to give it a give it a good old shade now. So we're going to start at the top because gravity. And we're just going to basically take our flat chisel brush we're just going to kind of work it in starting with the head into this crevice here and on this back and you really got to rotate the figure and it's very important that at the end once you're done that you're kind of going back and dabbing off a lot of these areas so that you don't have any uh, crazy buildup because sometimes it's very hard to deal with stuff like that after it builds up and you're like uh oh but I'm trying to keep it really tight. I'm trying to work with it here, but I want to make sure I get all my bases covered starting with the top. And you can see it's really starting to, to show through like the detail and the shading in this rib area and this neck or near symbol. So I'm go back over here and grab some more. And I like having this paint palette or this uh, little water bottle top paint palette right here so I can dab off my brush and really get that control um, that I need to have for working this operation here because you don't want too much you don't want it to kind of go everywhere so i'm dabbing it off because this thing sucks up a lot of a lot of paint you know and look at that look at that fade right there as i put it on so it's almost a glaze but not quite but you can remember you can do this in a very you don't have to be quite as controlled about it if you had started um, when we just laid down the metals right after the, the the priming right so that would have been more advantageous but now we're a little far into the project Kenny actually made fun of me. He's like, yo, where's your shading? And I was like, Ugh, totally forgot. So that's the real story here. <laughs> I actually forgot. But, you know, like I said, we're all busy. We forget things. Sometimes we forget the kids. Sometimes we forget the cats. Sometimes we forget to eat breakfast. By the way, if you don't eat breakfast, you really should. You gotta start that fire in the morning. You gotta get going. So now we pretty much got through all the surface area here up in the crotchal area and down the back of this tabard which by the way i didn't paint gold because i don't know it just seems like a bridge too far almost now i really should have gone in here in the spots like there's a spot right there and i should have used the base color to cover that up so i might actually have to do that at a later date but i really should have gone in there and done my due diligence before we jumped into this recordings uh jam right here 
and done that but that's okay you kind of get the idea right so you can just hit it up with your base color so now I'm just kind of looking for pooling issues right here across the top didn't look so hot it looks like all the flat areas are good so we're really gonna look for like this the, the back here on the shoulder pads really likes to pull and we're not too concerned about this area right here so it's almost looking like it's really coming through all the flat areas are good you see this really nice definition the separation here all of the little detail areas this gnarling this ribbing or whatever you want to call it on the stave is amazing there's another spot i missed with the gold but you know what i mean right there and there it is it's really coming through right here and so we're gonna let this dry um, it is going to be glossy because remember it's gloss, but what you want to do is you want to hit this with Tester's Model Master Dull Coat, which you can actually spray in any weather condition, well not any weather condition, but it won't craze if you do it in a humid environment. So yes, it is glossy, but that's actually going to help protect it. It's going to give you like a, almost like a faux protective coating over top of this. Plus, it's going to really help when I get in there and I do that green glow up here and in the eye area because it's going to help it stick in the, the airbrush paint to kind of flow a little bit. So it's kind of a good thing um, to, to be part of that glossy. Now it's just going to look a little weird and it's going to look a little shiny for a while. But you just got to get over it and remember that at the end of your project, you're going to fix that. Okay, so as promised, he is all dry, but super shiny because we used that gloss. But not a big deal. I mean, you know, it'll get worked out with uh, the spray, the matte spray after you're done. But, and I also went back and fixed the uh, the little gold overages with the base color and you can't even see them anymore there. So I might've misspoke. I said uh, dull coat, but this is actually lusterless flat from Model Master. It's a lacquer. So as long as you control the environment with dust and stuff like that and particulates in the air, you should be good to go as far as like humidity and stuff is concerned with uh, crazing and, and all sorts of those environmental factors. So I'm going to jump off here and go finish up. I got about 24 of these guys to get to this point uh, before I go in and do the green glow effect that I was talking about that we already did a tutorial on here on the channel as well. So check that one out. Uh, next. Deleted scenes, bonus content, and all the interviews and post-game wrap-up videos can be located in the Hall of Veterans on thelongward.net. Visit thelongward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached. That's not all. Thelongward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.